proudly presents the Motomaster Pro Formula 2000 Series. Well, Jim Paulson with your Shannonville in Southern Ontario, ready for the seventh round in the Motomaster Pro Formula 2000 Series for 1987, and with our co-host Paul Jader. A nice day, Paul. Perfect day, and we're going to have a great run for the championship. Stefan Prue could wrap it up all this afternoon, but he needs the help of the man who's sitting beside him on the starting grid, Richard Laporte. Prue has to win the race today, and he has to count on Laporte finishing worse than second. This is Stefan Prue. What a season he's been having. Five consecutive victories in this Motomaster Series. One of your biggest teachers, Richard Spinard, set some records when he was Formula 2000 racing. You're ready to break those records. Are you anxious to to show Richard that you can beat his record? I don't think it's the most important thing I, uh, right now. I think for me, it's first of all, to finish as good as possible. That's what was my plan in every race. Of course, it's great. I mean, if I can pull this stunt out, I will, you know? And so it suddenly we'll good, look good in front of Richard, and uh, I think we're gonna create a little bit of competition between him, him and I. How do you feel now about one of your former students about to beat your record, your string of victories in Formula 2000 racing? Well, I always said that uh, everyone gets beaten once in their life, and uh, I'd rather see him beating me than somebody else, uh, because I feel responsible a lot for his, uh, uh, you know, his behaving on the track and, and and the technique that he's applying and the speed he has, and and we we are very proud of him. And not only is our former student, he's now one of our instructor. In second place on the grid and in the season-long championship is Richard Laporte. I asked him if he's concerned about Claude Bourbonnet and his new Reynard. Claude is fifth now in the standings before this uh, this race. Uh, if he has a few good results and I finish about five or six, he still can't catch me. So no, he's not. The only thing though is Stefan Pru wins this weekend. He clinches the championship. So I have I have to win or at least for him not to win this weekend because then it's all over. Claude Bourbonnet has had a disappointing season so far, but today, with a new car, maybe things will improve. Who's your main competition going to be here on the track, other, other than, of course, Stefan Pru, who spent so much time here practicing? Um, Richard Laporte and uh, Daniel Campo, I think, these, and my teammate, Brian Malcolm. Do you feel now, though, as, since you have a brand new car, that you can, you can give them a better run for the money? I sure hope so, but... I still have to uh, practice the car a bit and uh, get it right as fast as them. They've been working on it for a few months. I had a day, so I think, but I, I think it should be all right. I'll be in the top five. The best seat at any car race is not in the grandstand, but obviously in the cockpit. And for that reason, today on CTV's Wide World of Sports, we're going to give you the best seat in the house. Driver Jack Arbus is going to carry the Motomaster CTV camera with him throughout the race. A Sony video recorder will be secured inside the car, secured against vibration so that we can get you the best pictures possible. And to see the race from Jack's viewpoint, we're going to mount a camera on the outside of the car. But when you look at this vehicle, there aren't too many places where you could strap a large video camera. For that reason, we have the special Motomaster CTV camera. This is it. It's about the size of a shotgun shell, and we're going to mount it on the side of Jack's helmet to give you the best possible view of this race. Rolling out onto the pace lap, there goes Stefan Prue in the Rothmans Reynard. Starting beside him, the yellow and green Swift of Richard Laporte, followed by Daniel Campo, who qualified third. The number four Cardinal team car of Claude Bourbonnet is next, then the white Swift of Dwight Woodbridge, and the second Cardinal team car driven by Montreal's Brian Malcolm. The fastest Van Diemen qualified seventh in the hands of Jeff Foster, starting eighth, Gord Cullen, ninth, David Berkey, starting beside Berkey, Ian Willis in the red car, number 11. A pair of Swifts on the sixth row, the MEI entry of Scott Maxwell, and the only woman in the race, Molly Elliott from Dallas, Texas. Craig Brittle in a Van Diemen, and Brad Baker and a Swift make up the next row. Peter Such has his Reynard in 15th. The similar car of John Caridi beside him in the 16th spot. Toronto's Marty Roth joins the series driving Paul Tracy's Reynard. He'll start ahead of Darcy Kennedy and brother Jay Roth in number 72. It's been all Reynard, Swifts, and Van Diemen so far. But that right orange car is an Adler, driven by its designer, Percy Adler from Richmond Hill. Completing the grid, Robert Weatherseed, Len Campbell, and my sentimental favorite twin, Jack Arbess, wearing our camera on his helmet at number 27. Stay with us. We'll be right back for the start.
Jim Paulson and Paul Cheatham at Shannonville for the start of this 15-lap Motomaster Pro Formula 2000 event. Here they come, Paul. All lined up on the start-finish line. There's the green flag, and they're charging into turn one. Richard Laporte has to win the race today. He knows it, and he's charged into it immediately. Heading into turn two, he's got Stefan Prue right behind him, and there's a, a bunch up there for third spot. Danny Campo in car number 29, and Claude Bourbonnet, number four. What a battle into corner one. I tell you, Cabo had Bourbonnet, Malcolm, the whole gang all over him. The only man sort of running away off the top is Laporte. He hasn't done that yet this year, Paul. He's looking strong. He got a great start, but his mirrors are filled with the Rothmans Reinhardt, number 65, of Stefan Prue. As they head into turn six, Laporte Swift out front, crew in second place, and his teammate Danny Campo in number 29 is running a strong third. You know, Danny Campo has not been that aggressive as yet this season either, but boy, he is determined to try to get out in front of not only his teammate, but the man running in front right now, Paul. He's going at him. Campo had a good run in the rain at Mosport. This is the first time we've seen him challenging the leaders in the dry. They're going into the hairpin now. Richard Laporte out front in car number five. On to the long back straightaway. Stefan Pru in second place. Campo third. Bourbonnet fourth. Brian Malcolm, his teammate, back in fifth spot. And look at this train as they come out of that back straight. There has to be about 12 cars in a row here, Paul. And they really don't begin to separate until uh, Laporte gets him back into a corner here. Oh, look at this. Our second place man a little off track there. Now into turn 12, Laporte out front, Stefan Pru in second place. He bounces the car off the curb. This is a tight part of the course. They just have to flick the wrist left, right, left, and then right into the last corner, corner 14, before the start-finish line. Look at this. Laporte has led the entire lap one. As they come back into the front straight, he's still out in front, Paul. Stefan Pru looking to the inside, but he's not lining up Laporte for a pass yet. He's content to sit in second place. Down into turn two under heavy braking. This is one of the best places on the course to do some passing, but Pru elects to stay in second place. Indeed he does. We've got uh, Danny Campo just a little bit outside of the view of our cameras, but believe me, he is right in the tail of his teammate. Well, Richard Laporte has to contend now with the two rookies who are behind him. Stefan Pru in his first full season of professional racing, as is Danny Campo. Richard Laporte has been running the Canadian Tire Series for a number of years now, and he recognizes that he's the gentleman racer in this crowd. Oh, there's Molly Elliott. She's off the track. That's a shame. Uh, she brings it to a stop. Uh, looks a little bent up in front there, Paul. A little hard to judge from our point of view, but she's getting out of the car. It looks to me as though she's run into someone else on the circuit. The wing at the front of the car is bent forward. You can see it there just by the left front tire. Yeah, she's just checking the right-hand side here as well. Let's get back to the leaders, Paul. What a fight out front. Down the back straightaway once again. Richard Laporte out front. Stefan Pru in second. Danny Campo third, and Claude Bourbonnet, the front four cars, now beginning to pull away from the rest of the pack as they head towards turn 11. In fact, you know, as we gazed at that train coming out of the corner, uh, we had 10, 12 cars involved there earlier. Now it's down to about 6, 7, but boy, still a fight out front. Stefan Pru is using a lot more road than Laporte. You can see when they come out of the turns, he's sliding the car very close to the edge. He's bouncing it off the curbs. There he's having a look on the inside, trying to pass. He hasn't got enough room. A nice attempt, however, but Laporte just shut the door on him. Oh, you know he's going to try to set him up now, Paul. As they come through into the front straight one more time, they'll settle down a bit here. I would imagine Prue will have a shot at him or try to win the corner. Yeah, here it comes. You can almost smell this one coming. He's right up under his rear wing. Oh. There he is, pulling to the inside, hard on the brakes. A beautiful pass. He actually breezed right past Laporte. It didn't look that difficult from our vantage. Oh, pretty blue right on by. Now Laporte is trying to hold on to him, but he's got Danny Campo right on his tail now. Laporte may be having some problems with the car. Prue got through so easily. And now Campo is threatening to take over second place. We better keep an eye on the number five Swift there in second place. There goes Campo on oh. the inside. Well, he made that look effortless as well. Now we've got the two Spinard David drivers up in front. Might be a hit here, maybe Paul, but Laporte was holding them up just a hair, perhaps, because now that Prue is by, he's beginning to run away. Uh, Danny is not quite pulling that off. Uh, Laporte is holding on to him. Crew is definitely, however, pulling away. Look at the gap he's opened up already, heading into the hairpin. Danny Campo in second, Richard Laporte running third. Now it'll be interesting to see if Claude Bourbonnet can reel in Richard Laporte. You know, the uh, observation you made earlier about Crew uh, seems to be true. He does dive into that corner, for example, quite a bit deeper. He seemed to be off the start, a little bit more erratic, uh, maybe a little more driven than perhaps our other two competitors here. He knows he has to win this race today, and he's counting on Laporte finishing third or worse, actually second or worse, if you know, Laporte finishes where he is right now in this event, Stefan Prue will win the Moto Master Championship. There's excitement now. It's a pretty definite that Prue is uh, establishing his lead. This is really where the fight is shaping up for second fall. 
Danny Campo getting some good seasoning in this race. He's familiar with the track, however. He's run a number of school events here, and this is also where he got his racing license from the Spinard David Racing School. The man who's very much going to become a part of this battle, too, is uh, Claude Bourbonnet. We cannot ignore Claude. Uh, he certainly is right in there in the fray right now, Paul. He's starting to feel out his brand new car. It's quite different from the year-old car that he was driving. This new 87 Reynard is a sophisticated piece of equipment. Obviously, the top two drivers in this race so far have got 87 Reynards. The old Swift of Laporte is running in third. And now, the other brand new car of Claude Bourbonnet, number four right there, is starting to pick up some ground. You'll note just a little further back from all that fight, we've got Malcolm and Jeff Foster. They're just sort of sitting back there, I think maybe wondering in their minds what's going to happen in front of them, Paul. I'm sure they're counting on the pressure getting to two of the, our leading drivers. Stefan Prue has to perform well today. He wants to win the championship. He wants to tie the all-time win record in a season in Formula 2000 racing. And Richard Laporte, who we see there running in third spot behind Campo, knows he has to win today or it's all over. So I think the other drivers are probably sitting back there waiting for one of those two to make a mistake. Moving into corner 11 on the third lap, we note with our race leader, Brew again a little more deep into that corner than those who follow him, Paul, so he's still being driven here. He's doing a fine job. He's, ooh, another bounce off the curb. He loves that curb on that corner. Oh, Brian Malcolm's off the road. He gets a couple of wheels into the dirt, but keeps going, and he manages to hang on to fifth place. Well, in fact, Jeff Foster right behind him was not able to gain much ground at all on that move, and as the leaders cross the start-finish line, let's have a look at our leaderboard. Stefan Pru is out front after four laps, and Jim Paulson and I will be back with more from the Shannonville Motorsport Park right after this. <laughs> 